Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another TrueTech troubleshooting tutorial. Today in Adobe Lifecycle, I want to demonstrate to you how to consume web services using data, using data connections. And so first I want to show you the simple web service that I built on my local web server. Uh, it's just a get file, put file web service where you give the web service a file name and it returns to you that file, which in this case would be a picture in a bit stream if the file exists on the web server. So we have that set up. Now we need to know how to consume it. Uh, first of all, you need to have the data view palette selected under your window data view. That needs to be checked. And inside of that, nothing exists as of right now. And in, in a normal brand new form, nothing will exist. But that's where we want to right click and create a new data connection. When we do that, a wizard pops up, and of course we can name our connection. And today we're going to use a web service, so we're going to use the WSDL file for our data connection. Click Next, and I'm going to paste in my URL from my local web server with the name of the web service uh, there. And of course, if everything is good with that URL, I hit Next, it's going to go and find what exists on that web service and then give me back my choices of what I can do with that service. So I'm going to use the get file and I don't need to check any of those boxes. When I click finish, all of a sudden there appears over here a graphical representation of what that web service does. So it's called picture web service, that's what I named it. And there's two methods, a get file request and a get file response. And underneath these hierarchies, you see that in the envelope of the get request, it wants you to give a file name, which is represented here by this text box object. And so if we take this and drag it onto our form and drop it, the representing, representing this file name is this text field, and it's bound to it. If we go into the object tab and under binding, we see that this text field is bound to our data connection. It's very important. So we have a, a file name and then we have a button down here called the get file button. That triggers the, the event of the request. So um, basically in this simple scenario, we put a file name in this text field and then we click the get file button and the web service is called and then this object, the get file response, is given back to us if such a file name that we give it exists. And so the same kind of little envelope with a text field representative here comes back. Now, Lifecycle doesn't know that the web service that I'm setting up and using and trying to consume here is going to give back a file. It just knows it's a binary stream of data, which it interprets to mean it's going to be a text field. But in this case, the binary stream of data is actually a picture that's coming across the web service. And so I don't want to just drag and drop this here because if I do that, then I'm going to get a bunch of uh, garbage data that represents a picture that won't do me any good. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to choose from the object library an image field and draw that on my canvas. And we're going to take out the caption. And then in doing that, I'm going to bind this image field to the response get file result. And so there's two ways to do it. I can go in here to the binding tab under the object view and I can choose the web service, get file response, message body, response, get file result. I can do it that way. Or uh, the simple way to do it is to take this result object, drag it and drop it on top of the image object and then the same binding property window comes up and I can say okay. So there's two, there's an easy way and a long way to do that. So now I have a web service that should produce results. If I type in a correct file name and click the file button, I get the corresponding picture. If I type in square, square picture comes up. If I just type in square, 
there's an error. The, 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 web, the web server doesn't have that file, doesn't know what to do with that word, and so it spits out an error. So our web service is working and doing exactly what we want. But this is not very user-friendly as we have it set up right now. So we want to change things around and add a few objects and add some, job, some JavaScript to make this a really a user-friendly experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the object library and get a drop-down list. I'm going to create that on my canvas by dragging and uh, by creating that. And I'm going to give it an intuitive caption, get picture. And then I'm going to add three items. I'm going to add circle, square, and triangle. And those three items are going to correspond to the three pictures on my web server. And then I'm going to bind. I'm going to go to the binding tab in that. Um, so I've got three items in my drop down. When I preview my drop down, I now have these three choices. But when I select them, nothing happens because I haven't put my JavaScript mechanism in yet. So in order to put a JavaScript mechanism in this object, that, that will make a user a good user experience, I want to go to the binding tab first of that object and specify item values. Right now it just gives it a default value of 1, 2, 3. I'm going to change those to the value of I'm going to change those to the value of the images that are on my web server. Once that's done, I can come back to this. I can come back to this object, go to the script editor, and enter two lines of JavaScript code into the exit event to make this whole thing work right. So the first line of code sets the raw value of file name, that's this object, the requesting file name object, to the raw value of this of the drop down. So when I exit out of this form, excuse me, when I exit out of making a selection in this drop down, the value of that gets automatically pasted over here into this file name. And then I just want to click the button. And so I can do that programmatically by saying this dot parent dot get file button dot execute event and the execute event I want the event I want executed is the click event once that happens I click square then immediately that's populated and that button is pushed without the user having to do it and the picture corresponding picture is sent from the web service same thing for all these other choices of course to make it really uh, sharp and user friendly we don't want this behind the scenes kind of me these mechanisms that exist behind the scene to be visible so we can just all we have to do is go in here and hide these two things and then when we preview the form the user is none the wiser he just experiences the rich content and the behind the scenes stuff is hidden from him so hopefully you learned a thing or two about consuming web services in Adobe Lifecycle uh, of course, the sky's the limit on how you can apply this. There are many applications that you can use with uh, uh, database-driven web services where you can have a list of employees, say, in the drop-down, and then the corresponding phone number gets populated into a text field or some such thing like that. It doesn't have to be graphic, real, graphically uh, oriented like this one is. And you can even get the web service to populate the drop-down list for you. Uh, if 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 you want to get that involved with things, a lot of lot of options here. So um, keep those questions coming on YouTube, and keep checking the blog, truetechtroubleshooting.blogspot.com for new videos. As always, we like to remind all our viewers and listeners that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.